So our topic today is bulimia. And my guests are Isadora. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Isadora is the one that previously had bulimia and had a rather spectacular recovery from that. She'll be telling that story. And her therapist, my very good friend, Sonia Novinsky. Say hello, Sonia. Hi. <laughs> and you guys are both from Brazil, right? Yes. Right. So before we started this conversation, um, I went to the internet to webmd.com, which is one of these big medical websites that talks all about all kinds of ailments, and looked up bulimia because I was interested in what they thought was the cause of bulimia. And like with so many things, what I read was doctors don't know what causes bulimia. So you know, there's a number of things they can do to help. And I think, I think Isadora, you told me you've been to before Sonia, was it two or three therapists for this? Three therapists. Three, alto Sonia. three altogether. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, the medical profession doesn't know what causes it. They have some treatments for it, things that help with it and this kind of thing. Um, but they tend to aim at the symptoms rather than the cause because they don't know what the, cause is. Now, Sonia and I are going to talk about a little bit later about what this cause may be and how she addressed it with you and, and you can chime in and so on. But in the meantime, I'd like to have you, if you would, Isadora, uh, just talk a little bit about um, how severe the bulimia was, you know, what was going on with you and so on. And to start, I think you've been having bulimia severe bulimia symptoms for like three years before meeting Sonia? Yeah, for three years. Yeah, talk a little bit about what was going on with you. Okay, so I was having bulimia for three years and I used to vomit like, there were days that I used to vomit five times a day. So pretty bad bulimia, pretty bad situation. And yeah. I used to just overeat and then purge. And then there was me again, purging and overeating and purging. Yeah. All right. So over and over again. And, and um, uh, uh, give us some, if you can, some idea of your thought processes along the way. I mean, why were you overeating and then purging? I mean, what, what was emotionally or mentally going on in your thoughts? Uh, okay, so I used to overeat for every reason. So if I was stressed, if I was, I don't know, tired, and in the others, like in the others therapist I I had, they used to give me some tools. Like if you are stressed, you you should just go for a walk. But as you told, it wasn't like really taking care of the real problem, just giving some like some escapes. And so sometimes I, I was able not to overeat and purge, but then it, it was just like a habit that I had. So I would just overeat and purge again every time I could. And, and do, I, do I understand correctly? It's more like not just a habit. It's more like there's a, a drive, a need. There's something important to you about that at the time but I'd be right yeah totally I was just like when I was coming back from work I would just think okay so we are arriving let's see what what my mom did for dinner so we are gonna overeat and then we are gonna perch so I, I would just have this in mind of the all the time so yeah I remember in our conversation before we recorded um, now I think you've told me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you told me that when you were a child, you were overweight. Did you not say you were a fat kid or something like words like that? Yeah. Yeah. I was. Okay. I was. What, mm -hmm. Well, I'm wondering if that's any part of your motivation to enter into the bulimia practices. Cyclo. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I always struggle with my weight. Uh, since I know like myself and so 
about three years ago, I made a liposuction. Liposuction is Lip this, right? Lip liposuction, yeah. Yeah. liposuction so yeah and then for i i mean i didn't love myself and i was not teacher to love myself no matter how so for the first time i used to see myself and like myself and so i was afraid to gain the way back and so i started to vomit because i mean the the overeating was always a problem that's why i was fat but as for the first time I was like looking at the mirror and like liking what I was seeing, I started to think, so, okay, what are, what are you going to do to keep this body like this? We are going to vomit. And it's like, for, for instance, like in the beginning, it was just a thought and I used to try to vomit and I just couldn't, but with practice, it became like a habit, like something I had to do. And so I would just eat and very easily I would purge. And when I, when I saw myself, I was like doing it five times a day. And I would just like, if I was in university or if I was at work, I would just escape and grab food and eat and purge no matter where I was. So. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, got it. Okay. So eventually you went through three therapists and I gather you weren't getting from them what you would like to get. That, that, that's true. Yeah. Totally. Okay. And so you met with, you met with Sonia. Now let, let me shift for a moment to talk with Sonia a little while, and then please chime in anytime you want to, to add to what Sonia is saying or, you know, whatever. So we have a conversation going. Okay. But Sonia, Sonia, she came to you with the bulimia. Um, I don't know precisely what you did, but I, I assume you were looking for cause and you were using the unseen therapist and things like that. So talk a little bit about how that went. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, from my experience, when I see a bulimic client, I also investigate i always investigate the mother daughter relationship because always food is very connected with motherhood if she's craving for for food or an over overeating since she was a child i think in childhood was an issue and i i investigate to search for this issue and it was easy found yes yes and we totally. found if we found in the beginning of the treatment because uh i knew that it was a poor poor very poor connection with her mom mm -hmm. and there was some events that of neglection and her mother couldn't pay attention on her and give her attention and tenderness. And I see, I saw like Isadora was sad. I, she was very sad person when she came. Her eyes had a sad expression. And so I, I the word that came to me was tenderness and support. So I think when we see a client overeating, there was a contradiction. There was always uh, like a defense not to be seen. So you overeat and you put layers on yourself. And a very deep necessity or need to be seen to be seen yes it, it's uh -huh. a defense against not to be seen a defense against not to be seen meaning no what? A, a, no a defense but there is a contradiction i always see when there is some fat people they leave a contradiction in one part they want to hide themselves their feminine 
with women, uh, the feminine part, the beauty, and the other, they need to do this. But in the other, they need so much love and food is, is love. They need tenderness. So they mm -hmm. craving for food as love. And at the same time, they need to hide themselves in some uh, way. Let me stop you saying, uh, Isadora, this rings with you. I mean, she's talking about it, but that's, that's how yes, you were I seeing it. I didn't finish. Oh. There's one more element. All right. And in the other, in, in, this in their hearts, in the emotions, this contradiction mm -hmm. emotions. And in the mind, there is this over mental, uh, a very mental, a lot of mental uh, drives to be skinny. Mm -hmm. This is a, what in the contradictions in the emotions, the the impulses, the emotional impulses, and and this image they fight for image a lot. Yes, it's this three points. Yes. They fight for self-image a lot. Yes, yeah, to be to show her they are skinny. And Isadora had a, a lot of bullying in school because she was fat. Bully, bullying. Mm -hmm. oh, bullying. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All, right. All right. All right. Bullying because she was fat, and when she was thin, she people loved her. Okay. But. There is another component, and then I I look for it, and it, and I found this. This was an event we work with unseen therapists. I did this work. Is that was an abuse when she was a little child? Yeah. Do, do Sexual you recall abuse? Oh, you recall recall that, Isadora? Yeah, yeah, I record. Okay. So I mean, do, uh, I mean, you you re, you recall that, yeah. Uh, and I also want to ask you what Sonia's been talking about. This resonates with you, the mother, the daughter, the conflict, yeah. and everything else. Yeah, totally. I mean, it was easily found because it's something that has always been here. But you know, when it's something that you don't give like awareness, so you think that's nothing. Like it doesn't matter. It's like nothing I have to worry about, but actually it does matter because once we we found the like this this problem, like this root of the, the problem I had, I was able to forgive myself because Sonia showed me love, show, so showed me like that I could love myself, that I was more than my body, that I had a soul, that I like love like tenderness that is the word she uses with me since the beginning and so we've been working with love and tenderness and so this was the key for us so the love that I didn't get from my mom or from I mean the abuse happened uh, and my mom was there so I don't know how she wasn't able to see what was happening. I was just a child. I, I, I had mixed feelings about what was going on because I was a child and I didn't know if I was, I don't know, I, I don't know if I was liking it or not. And I used to like blame myself and I wasn't able to forgive myself for what was, what, what, what had happened to me. And then I found Sonia and we was able to, through love, to cure everything. And I mean, I, I now realize it, but the process was like, I don't know how to explain. I just can feel it. And what I know right now is that I don't have issues with food anymore. And I feel this love and I mean, I don't have to look after food or vomit and I have lost weight. Like I am now 65 kilos and I've never been this weight my whole life and I'm doing nothing. I'm not starving myself. I'm not controlling myself. I'm just living my life and loving myself. Yeah. And okay. yeah. 
and you're you're not using willpower, which is a kind of an American phrase, but willpower to not eat. You just don't even think about it. It's just back to where it should be, just completely normal, if I understand right. Yeah. No, I'm not using your power. It's just like I'm eating and then I feel like I had en- I had enough and I just like, okay, I had enough. Okay. Bye. Right. And, yeah. and if I'm working, I would just not, I, I don't have time to stop and eat. And I mean, I used to, no matter what I was doing, I used to stop and go out for food. And right now, if I'm busy and I don't have time, I will not eat. I'm so sorry. I don't have time for food right now. I, I just can't eat. So... Okay. All yeah. right. Great. Uh, the the uh, what I'd like to. Um, I, I do want. I do want. I don't think you mentioned this, but I. You have now been about two months. Where you where you've had no bulimia symptoms, no thoughts, no nothing whatsoever. You're completely free for two full months instead of purging five times a day. Yeah, completely free. No thoughts, no nothing. Yeah. So let me shift for a moment to ask Sonia. It's one thing, Sonia, to talk about, well, we, we use love and we use tenderness. Yes, that's, that's the unseen therapist and so on. Um, but technically speaking, did you get down to like specific events like the abuse as a childhood and, and other mm-hmm. specific events with the conflicts and things like that? You don't have to go through all the details, but give me some highlights of what you did and how that how she responded and that kind of thing yeah Uh, just let me add one thing here Uh, yes she did and was hard for me at first because i mean it's hard for you to go back to this this feelings and emotions so it was hard but we touched everything and because we touched everything and bring to awareness because we did this I was able to forgive myself and let it go. So yeah, okay. I, I can tell that this is like, in order to let go, you have to bring to awareness. Otherwise, you won't be able to let it go. And you won't yeah. be able to cure if you don't bring all to awareness. And yeah, so you can go, Sonia. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what we call getting to cause. Those are all the emotional causes back there which we have to go back and find. We call them specific events, but we go back and find the emotional mm-hmm. cause. And then we can bring an unseen therapist and pretty magically, instead of weeks or months or years, we can do this in moments sometimes yeah. for these specific events. But go ahead, Sonia, from there, continue. So I was looking for something in the childhood, in the mother connection with her some events but was very interesting that uh, I always have this ima- image that she looking for tenderness she looking for love and then she told me about this abuse that was a guy uh, when her mother uh, separate from her father uh, for a while and they went to live in her grandmother, grandfather's house. And her grandfather has a personal trainer that was very uh, well, often there, always, always there, participating of the life, in, in some way participating of the domestic life. And the mother was there, but we don't know she was not paying attention and uh, this guy has some sexual sexual abuse more uh, I don't know I don't want to enter in some intimacy we don't need all the details no just some highlights that it's and I for me it was clear that she need to be aware that she was looking for love and tender and she wants someone that give her attention and uh, give her space, give her a place that for whom she was important. And so she liked in some way to stay with this guy in some, in some more intimate way than 
normal or usual for an adult with a child. And I think this had a very important, was a trauma for her in the way that after this, he went to his life and she was there with the guilt. And I think to, in this way, to add some layers to over it is a defense because it's a way to receive love, more love, and it's a way to not uh, do this again. Because there is an image that if I am fat, I'm protected. You know? mm -hmm. we, we, we see this. Uh, so you bring in unseen therapists on this event. Yes. I mean, I, and I'm hearing not just the abusive event or events that may have occurred, um, but also and also the the emotions around that, like like you know, I, I I'm needing love. This may not be the right way to do it, but you're young and you don't know and all of that. But we all need love. But we go back and take that apart with unseen therapists, and we can. Use love in a way other than just say, oh, well, let's just bring in love. I mean, she is love. She brings it in. That's one of the powers of our process. And it mm -hmm. just could sort of, it's like doing this properly. Kind of, she's, she sort of blends within you. It just sort of dissolves these traumas, these conflicts, these emotional thoughts that get in your way. Am I saying it right? Yeah, totally. Yes. yes. And when she when there is also the illusion that when you vomit part of the dirty things you have inside go away. goes away move yeah. away yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she right. had yeah. this dirty side in in herself i i understood because of this because but it's it's not uh rational because she was looking for love and the guy was looking for pleasure it's a confusion of language yes. yeah of course and and like the same guy used to have real now we know that he used to have relationship with my grandfather and i then as a child like he abused me it was only kisses for what, what I remember, but I was like four or five years old. And then I saw him with my mom. And so the guy had relationship with my grandfather, with me and with my mom. So what was going on? You know, it's yeah. like, it's like a total mess. And so I had no love from my family. I had grown up on an environment without love. So I was not teaching to love myself and to love yourself no matter what you know so this situation was certainly the certain the um, as you call the cause the main cause issue. yeah the main, the main issue. issue so yeah. and once we treated it like like magic everything goes away yeah beautiful beautiful i want to thank you Isidore, for sharing your, your story. But let me ask both of you before we close, do you have anything else you'd like to say? I don't know if Sonia want to share something else about the process because she really saved my life. So she's the one who can share something. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, what I can share is that I learned a lot with Isadora. And I think we, when we are starting, I was busy, she was busy. And, and I said, my God, I think it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> we will have time at the same time. Uh, and then, so I start a little, let's see if it, we will have time to work because it's never matched this, yeah. this time. But then we, we start and really I found so connected with her. She was like my sister or something. I feel a very 
connection. And then she went to a divorce, a separation again in these two months, the parents separate again. And she went through beautiful. She was serene. She was not involved. She let them work on their yeah. issues. And you so bring I up felt a lot, felt a lot, lots of connection with her to help in the day by day this month. Well, this month. So let me bring up. Let me let me close with a little concept for those listening in, especially those who are in the healing professions. Um, the conventional way that therapy tends to be done is the therapist has like the wisdom and helps the client and this kind of thing. This is done best. It's different. It's different. And, and Sonia was just now reflecting that she felt connection to Isadora and this properly done, both Isadora and Sonia began to get benefits out of a properly done session. Unseen therapist comes in and says, well, we're not just going to help Isadora. We're going to help Sonia as well. It's a, it's a connection thing that goes on that you don't normally see in healing sessions. Did I say that right, Sonia? Yes. That's perfect. I, I, I work a lot with All right. my whole being, not only my tec technique. All right. Okay. Again, with thank you to you both. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody listening into this is going to get a great deal out of it. And to all those listening in, we'll see you next time.